From Sydney, Australia, all the way to Portland, USA. Two misfits hang out after class to riff on the B-sides of professional life. These are your professional misfits. Or two, if now that we're here and recording, what do you think about detouring? I, I, I mean, and using this as a place to stand on. I mean, life fucking gets in the way and, you know we were going to have a certain conversation and now here we are, you know, like that's kind of the point of this whole thing. It is. It is. Um, I mean, do you want to do a different episode of, or do you want to just we're here now? Um, yeah, we're here now. I, I mean, I don't even mind losing the episode, you know, and placing it somewhere else or, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, cause this, for some reason feels right. Something about this feels like a moment, you know what I mean? So sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let's roll with it. I mean, um, okay. So this will be episode eight mm -hmm. bonus episode <laughs> eight, a, a break from your regularly scheduled program. Ladies yeah, sorry, ladies. misfits. This is, this is my, this is my doing. <laughs> it is. Uh, we were having a chat pre recording and, and Brody just went, uh, fuck it and just hit record and decided to talk about life because yeah, that gets in the way or that's the more important part. Work should be on the, you know, on the fringes. Um, so I'm going to throw out my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, you know, I, I throw out all the homework that I did and fuck. you know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, all right, we're talking, we're here and we're talking about relationships. Um, I'm single, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it just, uh, it just feels like, you know, a nice look into, you know, our lives and, you know, an opportunity for us to be honest, you know, yeah. at a level that I think that's not generally there, you know what I mean? And then at the same time, shit, that, that is our message, you know, life and, uh, you know, work, they fucking, they bleed, you know, like, and it's, it's, it's hard not to control that. Can I ask you something? Cause we're here on the yeah. podcast. This is about the podcast for the podcast that, you know, something like this, do, how does this sit with you? You know what I mean? Like right now, cause I I'm feeling nothing but support and, you know, encouragement, but I know for a fact, you know what I mean? There's some, you know, whether it's, you know, like shit, I just did the notes or, you know, uh, no. this, this was the plan or, no, you know, no, 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 no. <sighs> look, uh, there's a, there's a famous saying in, in showbiz, right? Like the show must go on. And there's a million anecdotes of, you know, someone's mother died and they still, they walked out and delivered the best performance of their life. I, yeah. right. But it was, for some sober wisdom and insight. I had a, a very good friend and director friend of mine, Adrian Barnes, who was a big fan of Noel Coward. So if any musical theater kids out there, they'll know who Noel Coward is. And Noel Coward wrote a song called, why must the show go on? Like, what is this, right? What is this expectation of, I should put life, love, my own health and catastrophe all to one side to appease the audience, to appease the peanut gallery, to keep other people happy and all those sorts of things. So I don't know if this made it in the, um, in our original little behind the scenes chat, but I said to Brody, like, it's not a binary thing. It's not an all or nothing. Like we must do it all the time. And that's what professionalism is. It's like, no, like professionalism is a, is a commitment commitment to your work and your craft. And I guess this is why we're here, but it's also an understanding of when that, when that commitment can't be fulfilled and being honest about it. Um, it's, you know, you didn't, we're having this discussion. We're now openly having this discussion with an audience, but it's not like you bailed on with it without saying anything. It's not like you made an excuse and decided to grit through it. It's not like you, you know, delayed or postponed with no explanation. Like you came here and I said, Hey man, what's up? And you're like, not great. This is what's sort of been going on. And then we fall into this chat so we can push our regularly scheduled program to one side 
we can have this conversation. Um, you ask me, I'm fine with it, man. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'll get my turn at mm -hmm. some point, a hundred percent. Um, I'm curious to know, I'm curious to know what an audience will think seeing as it, it's interesting because it was your call to hit record. You just went bang, mm -hmm. let's go. And all right. Uh, and this will probably end up being released. So it's, it's not like I've exposed you to the world Like you've, you've done that, you know, of your own choice. So, um, I, which is I'm, bizarre. Hey man. But, and sometimes it's needed. And, and I think, I think you, I think you summed it up by, by identifying that like, well, this is what the podcast is about folks. Um, this is what we're trying to, to highlight it's like professional work, family, love, mental health, sex, relationships, all of these things in this mix. Um, it's not as clean as we'd all, <laughs> as, we, as we'd all like it to be. And so look, if there, there's probably a 2% part of my brain, which is just like professional production crews going, holy fuck, like what's an audience going to think they're going to think where we're off the rails and we just make shit up as we go along. But I, I think I trust, uh, and this is going to be around episode eight. So if you've listened to every episode, you know, up to seven to now, I think you've got a pretty good sense of who we are, what we're about and why we're doing this. Uh, and this isn't trauma porn for the sake of trauma porn. So yeah, we're here, man. So let's, um, just breathe through it. Yeah, cool. You know, and I think, I think for me, if I'm being honest, there's been more than once in my life, more than one circumstance, more than one position where I think, and not just, you know, a Google search where it's like, oh, you know, 90% of relationships experience this, or, you know, uh, a, a, even a therapist giving you a statistic like that, you, you know, where I just got to see somebody in it and they were making it through it in their way, whatever that was, you, you know what I mean? Because I think every time I've seen an example of that, you know, whether it is in film or, it, you know, it's social media or, you know, what have you, you catch it and you feel it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just, I'm watching them go through this. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm feeling this. And I think more often than not, for me personally, you know, for our misfits out there, like this is, this is the permission I want to give you guys, you know what I mean? Because again, I think there's a huge misconception that things like this for the high performers and the high value person don't happen. And it's yeah, pure yeah. bullshit. You know what I mean? It's absolute bullshit. And it's even crazier because, you know, we've started this podcast, right? And then I've got, the branding agency stuff. And, you know, I've got a lot of stuff. So, and I talk, I'm on social media. So I talk and people, I think, get the idea that I'm that high performer, you, you know? And like, right. I, I mean, I, in some degree I am, you know, I'll take that for myself. I, I, I know I'm doing more than the average guy, you know, that's a cool thing, but at the same aspect, you know, I'm not more than the average guy. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, I, you know, and it, it just goes, you know, to show that I'm still touched by all of these other things that people are, you know, feeling and experiencing and going through. And if I was to lie to you guys or come on this episode and be like, oh, yeah, social media is fucking great. When in the back of my mind, I'm like, I want to explode the world. It's it's a, you know, it feels disingenuine, you know, so. Mm -hmm that permission, you know, that you can, you can feel and work through things and be who you are. And, you know, your experience is justified, you know, and hopefully you've got people in your circle that you can have this conversation with. Um, again, like before Brody hit record for the folks at home, we're probably just chatting for about five minutes and more to the point, Brody was chatting for about five minutes and I was just listening mm -hmm. and I don't really have anything to offer. Because, but I'll listen and offer some support. Uh, what it all, I think what it all started from is like, well, what do you need? And he's like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, hang on a second, hits record. And now here we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So, and, and yeah, man, look, that's, uh, that's a challenge in itself. I think if, if people, it's, it's, it's a two, twofold contract. I find it's like one, you need to be comfortable and secure enough sharing this and being open and vulnerable with someone to say, Hey, I'm in a weird place. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know if I, you know, can we just feel this out for a minute, which is awkward. It's awkward as much for you as it is for anyone that's listening. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and secondarily, yeah, whoever that companion and confidant is has to be mature enough. Um, I guess objective enough and empathetic enough to say, well, yeah, like I'll offer what I can. I'll, I'll listen. I'm not here to try and fix you. You know, if you need something specific, let me know. And I, I, th I think it's also fair to say that not a lot of people, and I might even dial down and say, even not a lot of men might have that kind of companionship or that, that kind of channel to, to discuss, you know, relationship problems in this way, because I guess for a lot of us and to your, to your case specifically, if you then went to your partner, your female partner and said, you know what, I kind of feel like this justifiably, they would take massive offense. Mm -hmm. You know, they would feel pained, you know, they would might feel attacked. They might feel all of these things. And that's a very, very different response and something that you'll have to deal with as opposed to having a social circle who will, will listen and, sort of support you and maybe offer some objective feedback. Men get shit on a lot for this, you know, because, because apparently, you know, men aren't emotionally intelligent and apparently men can't communicate. Men don't open up about their feelings and I call bullshit. Um, and maybe I'm the anomaly cause you know, I'm the actor in the room, but I, I call fucking bullshit. I'd also ask if, if men had the permission to, and if women, or, or partners were capable of listening to men, being vulnerable, being unsure, being scared, being up, upset, being hurt. Like, um, are, are men allowed to be hurt? I'm not talking about boys. I'm not talking about adolescents because you'll, we'll shit on men for trauma and, you know, and they bring this in, these relationships and all these sort of things. But if, if you've hurt a man, or if he's hurt in a relationship, is is he allowed to be so? And are we allowed to have these sort of conversations? And if so, whom shall we talk to? Mm -hmm. Is any of this relevant? Yeah, I mean, too much so. And, okay. and we, you know, it's strange because we, you know, had this conversation with a guest in this season, you know, mm. specifically kind of about, you know, gender roles and there's this expectation and it's very visceral. It's not even something anybody denies there. It, it really is not. There's this high expectation that a man, regardless of any situation is supposed to be the foundation and by all essence should have it figured out, right? Yeah. Whatever the fuck that means, <laughs> you know, whether it's, it's, you know, it's, financially. That, it's that quality of masculine leadership, you know, it's that warrior provider has all the answers can defend you will provide, yep. you know, and that's, and that's an infallible model that one should live up to at all times. <laughs> And, and look, I'm not, I'm not even saying to a, a degree that, you know, you shouldn't strive in essence for something along those lines, but to perceive yourself as so, or to have the expectation of someone else, you know, as a human being, and if you're even somewhat slightly self-aware, mm. you, you realize the gravity of life. You know what I mean? You feel each moment a little bit heavier and... In how, yes, yeah, sorry, finish. Yeah, please. It just it, like I said, how do you how do you place an expectation on someone of that magnitude? You know, that's that's a big one. That's a big yeah. one. You should have it figured out all the time. You should know where to lead me. You should know how to protect me. And you should know how to care for me. And I should never, I should never feel a falter in the confidence I have in you. That's what are you? Fuck? Okay, I, I, I'll try. You yeah. know, I'll try, but, and that's the thing. It's funny 
because we've also said this too, I, I think within the vulnerability to admit that I am not that man, there's a little more strength in that to lie and, you know, or, or even falsify pieces of myself to try to fit that man. Yeah. That's, that again, you know, starts to feel disingenuine, you know, like how much of myself am I just fucking putting to the side? Yeah. And let yeah. it go, you know, for the sake of someone else's comfortability. And that's a, that's a, that's a wild expectation to place on someone, whether it's, you know, for gender or, you know, societal position, it's like, holy shit, <laughs> you know? And I, and I know we're two men talking about it and we're both fully aware that these stereotypes, you know, affect both roles. I mean, the idea that women should be pristine virgins who are perfect mothers, cooks, homemakers, who will support their men no matter what and be loyal. And you know, this, you know, pristine facade, while at the same time being an absolute porn star in bed to satisfy said man. So it's, they're right. ridiculous stereotypes, both. And, and arguably, if, if, um, if uh, I would like to think in that if, if my girlfriend or whoever, came to, yeah came to me and and i had hurt her or something else or we could objectively have these conversations around how she felt and why and 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 i could listen to that without being uh feeling of getting defensive or feeling attacked or gaslighting or anything else like that if there's one look i'm if there's one healthy trait that my ex and i had was that we had both sort of come from an arts background. So both sort of understood how the healthy nature of emotions and there's a difference between me expressing my emotions and something that is your fault, right? Mm. Right. And the so- The responsibility of the situation. Right. And so often the time we could, we could have a dialogue or the way we would communicate would be, well, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put my shit on the table just to vent. And we're objectively going to look at all this shit on the table and then we're going to figure out well how much of that is is mine how much of that is my perception of something how much of that was triggered by something that you did that i just wasn't unsure of and i kind of take it this way you know so i i can say even though we weren't aren't together now but like for those four or five years we had a fairly transparent open emotionally honest form of communication so look there and i remember distinctly one time where we were filming we were filming something at night it was a stressful thing a few things had gone wrong i'd been locked out of my apartment she'd fucked up once or twice there's a fuck around of an evening probably similar to what you've just been through and we get back to my place and i was in a mood and when i'm like you know you can feel it from 10k away I'm just brooding motherfucker um <laughs> and she's you know and she's like so like how are you doing and i'm like I'm actually really pissed and I don't really want to be around you right now. She's like, I don't want to be around you either. And she just left. And I remember having relaying this conversation to my brother and he's like, well, that's real fucking mature. And I'm like, well, it was, I was because, just about, yeah, wait, yeah, right. just about to interject. Like, wait though. Is that like, I, I right. I objectively, didn't want to be around you and I'm at home and she's like, I don't want to be around you either. And then she mm -hmm. went home and so sort of had the evening, the cool off next day, sort of, you know, found that olive branch and then sort of everything else was fine, but it didn't turn into uh, this is your fault. It didn't turn into you told me to get out. It didn't tell, turn into a week long drama. And, and also it never came up again. It was never like, remember that time that you said that you didn't want to be around me? I'm like, for instance, okay, so I was, I was both lucky and both uh, luck, self-aware enough and emotionally mature enough to have a relationship like that. Because right. like, like I said to you, it, it's, it's a twofold dynamic. It's, it's great if, you know, it's great if you're emotionally intelligent and you could express yourself. If you have a partner that isn't on that level or has some other perspective let's say 
then it be, it doesn't matter how emotionally intelligent you are, you may as well be talking to a wall, right? Um, yeah, it's not, and it's it's uh, <laughs> difficult too because there's nothing to say against that that person's level of maturity in that moment because mm-hmm. that again comes from you know where I'm trying to stand is like I I need you to have your space to be who you are, you know what I mean? And experience and express the way that things are. I it's, it's hard because I'm that guy. I'm always strategy, right? Social media marketing, I'm always strategy. So what play can I do right now that in the long term is going to get her to see or, you know, take my pitch. And it's, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? Like it did. <laughs> not always, not always, not always. <laughs> no. And, and, and right. And it can, you know, but in the same aspect, it's like you said, and this isn't to her saying she couldn't understand what I'm saying, that she's not capable of understanding where I'm coming from. It's to the degree that she's not ready, you, you know, like, and it, and it takes, like right. you said, that kind of level of, vulnerability and also you know how did you phrase that you know like you you objectively need to look at yourself too you know like objectively it's not something that you're like you know you've attached each emotion and string of thoughts to a particular perspective and that's you analyzing yourself it's not you're getting caught up in the noise Mm -hmm. you know what i mean you can't give that to someone you know what i mean you it really can't it takes i i don't know i I don't know what for me it clicked where I was, where, you know, each situation I'm in and what's cool is you and I have had this conversation about the kids as well. Mm. You know, like I will come back and say, this is me in this and this is, you know, I'm sorry. And I'm not saying that's perfect. And I'm not saying that's, you know, I avoided the transgressions. I didn't, you, you know, they're still there. They're still you're still valid to feel that way about me. I'm just, you know, my biggest thing is shit. We're all human beings. You know, we're, we're moving and trying to understand this thing. That's life and all these connecting pieces and all this noise and all these influences. And how can you do that? It, you know, when the person, you know, essentially that regardless of how you guys actually demonitively feel about each other, you're supposed to be on a team. You, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, we're not uh, against each other. I, I and, and I, that's my position. I'm not against you. And even if we argue or have a disagreement or there's some discourse, you're not my enemy. You mm-hmm. know, there's something in front of us that is. And yeah. if I can get you to play on my side, then we can make it past this, you know. But it, at the same time, it's like I can't sacrifice you know my stability to try to help you achieve that because again number one that's an ego thing i can't i can't actually yeah. you know i can do that for somebody so for me to think that i can is a little yeah. a little ridiculous and then number two i gotta take care of myself yeah i gotta take i got that like you said, at the end of the day, you know, you may have a partner, you may have a support circle and they, if shit, they might even be the best in the world, but you know, who's going to bed with you when you close your eyes, you, you know, you you know who you're waking up with and who you have to deal with the next day, you, Mm -hmm. you know, so you, that's important. And that's something that I think for a long time, was a problem for me is I didn't take care of that. So you had all these issues and then they're exacerbated because you're not taking care of yourself. So at some point it's going to implode on itself, right? Because there's, there's no solace on either side of it. I'm not getting right. And the situation is not getting right. And it's, it's just exhausting. And I wish more people were transparent and real about it because, you know, funny enough, this was supposed to be about social media. I think one of my biggest issues with relationships on social media is we, it's the highlight reel, you you know, and then there's this, another just ridiculous expectation from outside in for most people, because we inherently compare, we just do, we, it's hard not to, right? So you see somebody in the perfect relationship, and this is so great, and they look wonderful, and they're going on trips all the time. What you don't know, though, is 
two minutes before that trip, he just called her a twat and she just said, you know, fuck this vacation, <laughs> you know, but hey, smile for the camera and you get that, that polish, you know? I was, I was going to ask, and I don't know if I should save it for the actual episode, but we're here now. It's like, do you not think though that like, there's enough of us, there's enough of us who, who know that? Like, because it's, here's the difference. Here's the difference between television, film, and social media is that television and film is, is a crafted product, but mm. the behind the scenes crew was often so small and so insular, right? Social mm -hmm. media is a crafted product, except the production of which and the, the behind the scenes is open source to absolutely everybody. So every school child to parent to everyone in the world knows how knows I can take five photos, choose the best filter, pick the best one. And the same with video and everything else. So while yes, there's the highlight reel. Um, and, and yes, that's used, for, you know, for either for attention or for marketing or whatever it happens to be. And keeping up with keeping up with the Joneses has always been a thing. Right, um, right. You know, right. pre-social media, it's always been a thing. You know, the neighbors mm -hmm. get the new car. Well, fuck now, I, I better get a new, you know, all that sort of right. shit. You know, Jane and John went to Hawaii. It's like, well, I'm, I'm going to go to the Philippines. Um, all that sort of, it's always been a thing. So social media is not to blame for that. And we'll get to this in the episode. But I, I wonder for as much as, for as much as people who create content for whatever reason, and there's that percentage that bite on, bite the bait of the lifestyle. I would reason that there is a much larger percentage, you know, even the creators themselves who know this is smoke and mirrors, right? And the only, and the only reason I raise this as a counterpoint is like, we've been around social media long enough now to know, like on every platform, it's the same. That's why LinkedIn, like for Brody and I, LinkedIn, we got really, really pissed off with LinkedIn is because you all know how this works. Like this is bullshit. Right. But this, the same game that's played on LinkedIn is played on TikTok, that is played on Instagram, is played on Facebook. It's like, look, mm -hmm. look how well I'm doing. Look how much I've made. Look at how successful I am. Look at the connection. Like, f like fuck off. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's why I, I had this discussion. And to dial it back to your point on relationships, it, it was interesting again with my ex. Like, we, you know, We've had a little bit of a chat about the sort of dynamic that we had, but like, and mm -hmm. obviously we were the bit of the odd couple, right? You know, um, you were not a D, yeah. I, we were, <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were, we were not your average, you know, vanilla couple. And even amongst, you know, other actors and professionals and whatever else, it's kind of like, well, you guys are weird. And it's like, you know what? Like, we're both, <laughs> we're both utterly comfortable, confident, happy, satisfied, fulfilled in this relationship and no one else's opinion actually matters. Um, that was, that was sort of the bond that we had. Now, I, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that that's something that's achieved over time in, I think that's attitude and perspective to life and relationships. That's what I would, that's what I would reason. I don't know if I'm right. Um, and now that I've been single for a couple of years, really, I could be wrong, yeah, you know, but I, but there's a lot of, I think apps and we'll get to this in season two, but like, like apps and dating and all men think women are this and all women think men are this. And I think it's noise and ridiculous. Um, but the, the drive for companionship and genuine connection is a story as old as humanity itself. <clears throat> yeah, no, I cannot disagree with you. I, the thing, the thing is, and not to, you know, counter again, it's just that I agree that there's enough people that understand the dynamic, right? I of think, socials. Right, of socials, yeah, right. 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 And, and the highlight reel and the comparison and that kind of trap, but the catch there is, I think not a lot of people recognize how to get out of it, you know, because as much as you know, you know, and you're like, oh shit, you know, I, I'm experiencing this and I've got XXX in my life and those are good things, 
and I show those to the world, but yeah, I've got shit going on. You know, my mom's got terminal cancer, you know, I'm fighting with a, a spouse. I'm trying to build a business. These are all, you know, things inherently deep down that we know. And yes, we can attach to somebody outside in, but again, when they're earning six figures or their relationship looks wonderful, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it is. And I find myself even sometimes it, it's hard, you know, and, uh, how do you not fall into the trap? I think is the best question. And I think you kind of touched on it there. It, it comes with having, I think built and identified that perspective of a relationship for yourself before allowing that noise to have any interference. Right. Mm. And it, we're lucky. We're fucking damn lucky because we were, we grew up in a time where this shit wasn't prevalent. You, that was you know? sort of my, that was sort of my next question and, and, and tying into what you were saying before. Like, now do you think it's a case because it's like, it's everywhere, you know, kids, kids today, like twenties plus, uh, um, have grown up where everything's it's the norm like facebook's snapchat um instagram tiktok this is the norm and this is the bread bread and butter so if this is the daily noise and the daily noise is highlights and the daily noise is um look how much money i made or how to hook up with models or how to make yourself look pretty or you know these are the hacks to get him to love you um and if that's the noise well you know if this is everywhere it would become first of all that's your baseline right and if the, if the 90 percent of informational content is this it it you a you accept it as the norm and then b it becomes really really difficult to shift that thinking or, or to question it to find the other 10 percent to go well really you know um again like i don't know maybe this is a, a question for the subsequent episode but um i <clears throat> and i don't have insight into that world like i'm not on i deleted insta because it's you know whatever um so <laughs> this is tiktok <laughs> is the, the cesspool of social commentary as far as i'm concerned linkedin isn't much better if brody's cracking up um <laughs> we're, we're supposed to be saving all of this for the episode on social media but um like LinkedIn, if it wasn't a professional marketing and promotion tool, like I'd push it into a furnace or I'd have someone else manage it for me. Like I'm quite happy writing content and articles and books and doing keynotes and consulting without that, if it wasn't a necessary, a necessary evil for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the final point, which, mm, the final point is if you, if you play this game of social media, Unfortunately, the algorithm only rewards those who consistently and habitually play this game. So it's constantly like putting tokens into a slot machine that you can very rarely ever win. Well, the, the prize is engagement, right? Yep. Um, and you have to commit, you know, peak times regularly, X, Y, and Z, and the said algorithm rewards you for that so if you're someone who doesn't have the time or the inclination or thinks that's a stupid game to play or is judicious about how they want to time you know i don't have ever anything profound to say daily maybe once a week <laughs> you know but you know, no, this is good. And, and I want to say two things. I want to thank the viewers for, you know, kind of coming on this trip with us because mm, it has I, been a trip. I, yeah, I do. I do plan to release this. I think you guys are, you know, going to gain something from this. I gained something from this. I've, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, you know, how tonight was going to go, but I showed up and here's my support circle. And now I have the confidence in you. I have the confidence in myself to get through something like this. I, you know, I, I also now with the experience and kind of how it's played out, 
I'm confident that this is going to be received, you know, and then, you know, to your point on social media, I think the conversation that we're going to have on social media is going to be really eye opening because you, you raise some really great points. Right. And I think one of the, the common conceptions that everybody's under right now is that it's a necessary evil. Right. Mm. And, and I get it and I get it, you know, and I get it, but there's, there's so much outside of, the noise, the churn rate, the engagement, the, you know, the average play that people make on social media that, you know, is more impactful than I think people realize. And that goes as far as things like dark socials, word of mouth, um, it, you know, the way that this is kind of open the world of opportunity. You know, for instance, there's kids right now that, Never in a million fucking years, brother. Not, not, no shot in the fucking world would they have been a musician ever. Right. They yeah. didn't have yeah. the fucking connections. Yeah. They didn't have the circumstance. They didn't have Excellent a goddamn point. chance. Yep. And guess what? Now they're some of the biggest names in the world. Okay. That's, there's something powerful about that. Right. And that yep. goes to play for any example. Right. There's people. F- who too didn't did not have the means did not have the opportunity to build a business a because they didn't have the information accessible and b because there was no way to get there right i guess what now yes it's a lottery machine and it's saturated i'm not ever going to deny that to anybody but the fact that you have a chance Mm -hmm. is fucking crazy because Mm -hmm. before the odds were much different (laughs) and the circumstances were much harder. And I think that's one of the things that I think as somebody that sees the kind of grandiose side of it and has watched some success stories and been a part of some success stories and seen things like that and built a couple audiences for myself, I realized that, you know, as much as like you were saying, it's about that consistency. It's about that rhythm. It's also about that realness, you know, and what's funny now is moving forward, how we were able to have this conversation. I think that's what people are looking for. So social media is going to change, you know, in the next two to five years, it's not going to be this cesspool of unadulterated regurgitated content that you see time and time again because look we're going to have the tools to choose what we see i don't know if anybody's noticed but for instance on linkedin tiktok and facebook you will start to see questions directly from the platform did this interest you Mm. and uh let me tell you something the people that land and make interesting content they're going to win because I hit yes every goddamn time it's something that interests me. And I hit no every time it's something that doesn't. And all of that noise is going to have a filter, you know, and people are going to have a much clearer indication of what we're looking for, you know. And I think one of my favorite points to make is this is still pretty damn new. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. as, as much as it's been around, right. And we we're seeing patterns and we're identifying structures and behavioral things to come from this and blah, blah, blah. It's still brand fucking new. It, mm-hmm. it, and we, we don't even know the impact that this last 10 years has had, you know, to the full scope of it. We've still got kids that are developing in the world of social media. You, you know, yeah. this is wait till one of them, sees this for what it is and they can change the structure they can change the voice right when we're about to mix in ai and all that sort of capacity as Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. so that's that will be an interesting conversation to be had for sure here's here's my here's my final question to you from from the beginning of this chat to before you hit record to now You feeling better? I do. I do. And uh, I just want to, again, say to the audience, like, it's that cliche, you you know what I mean? Like if, if number one, you can get through the gritty stuff, there's some satisfaction in that. And then number two, if, if you, if you have some capacity or permission from someone in your life to represent yourself in the full spectrum of real you know this is what it is for me this is what i got going on this is how i'm feeling 
and they can receive you. Yeah, I feel 10 times better than, you know, before. So yes, to answer your question. Yes. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Um, and I'm glad I'm glad. And I hope you'll get to, you'll get to pull the trigger on this. So this is the test for the audience. If, if Brody feels overexposed, this won't be published. If he's, if he's cool with it, then it will be published as episode, you know, seven and a half, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> so in that case, um, if, if you are listening to this in the future, then episode eight is going to be on social media. Um, and basically what's its value? All of it. When we're living in a social media generation, this is Brody's bread and butter and his expertise. And I would rather just push it all into a furnace. So <laughs> it's going to be an interesting discussion. It's going to be an interesting discussion and obviously topical. And we hope you guys are going to be a part of it. Um, Brody, any final thoughts before we sign off on this on this bonus episode? Uh, thank you to my misfits and you know my co-host that's all i have easy so in the meantime i've been chris i've been brody and you stay classy misfits we'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.